Hello everyone. In the last video of basic electrical engineering lab, we discussed about verification of Kirchhoff's voltage law. So in the similar manner, today we are going to verify Kirchhoff's current law for a given DC circuit. So our objective would be verification of Kirchhoff's current law in a given DC network. All right. And for that, we'll be requiring certain apparatus like the last time. So the first thing required is your breadboard. Secondly, we'll be requiring certain connecting wires. Then we'll be requiring a multimeter and we'll be using it as a, a meter. Next thing we require is a bunch of carbon register and we'll be requiring four registers of different values or they can be of same value as well. So you all are already aware of Kirchhoff's current law because it is a very basic law, but let us now again go through its statement. It states that the sum of current entering the node is equal to the sum of current leaving the node. All right. So let us suppose this is any node and it has one incoming current and two outgoing currents. Fine. Which means that according to Kirchhoff's current law, summation of IK will be zero, meaning I1 will be equal to sum of I2 plus I3. Or we can say I1 minus I2 minus I3 would be equal to zero. All right. So this is your given circuit diagram. It is quite similar to the diagram for Kirchhoff's voltage law. Only difference here you can see is that you have now three meters in place of three volt meters because this experiment requires us to measure current rather than so if we consider node number a here then at node number a we can say that i1 should be equal to the sum of i2 and i3 because i1 is the only incoming current whereas i2 and i3 are the outgoing current so we need to prove for verification of Kirchhoff's current law, we need to prove whether I1 is equivalent to the sum of I2 and I3 or not. And for doing so, we require to follow certain procedure, which would be as follows. Firstly, we need to identify certain register from the bunch of register like we did in previous experiment, for which we will be requiring color coding of carbon register secondly we are required to connect the given resistances into a proper fashion decided by the circuit diagram all right thirdly we need to switch on the power supply we will be given the power supply from the project board which is nothing but simply as a breadboard with integrated supply all right and lastly we will be noting down the reading of a meter so this circuit can also be drawn like this similar to previous experiment only difference here would be now we are connecting three meters in place of three voltmeters only voltmeter required in this experiment is the voltmeter which would be measuring as to how much supply we are giving fine so rest of the diagram would remain same only thing which would be change is how to insert a meter so for that we have already gone through the procedure for inserting an emitter which would be series with the resistance through which we want to measure the current all right so let us come to the observation table in observation table we have five columns all right so the first column is similar to previous experiment which is source voltage okay depending upon how much how many readings you want to take you can vary your source voltage as 5 volts 10 volts 15 volts 
एटसेट्रा सो दैट फॉर डिफरेंट वैल्यूज ऑफ वोल्टेज सोर्स योर किच ऑफ करंट लॉ कैन बी वेरीफाइड कॉलर नंबर टू हेयर इज योर करंट आई वन सो how will we calculate this current i1 or how will we identify or measure this current i1 this will be measured in across or we can say flowing through resistance r1 we will be connecting our ammeter in series with resistance r1 and it will give us i1 similarly i2 and i3 will be calculated as the currents flowing Through resistance R two and R three respectively. Fine. So in the last column, what we need to do, for example, if you have gotten value x here and y two was, uh, let me say I two was y milliamperes and I three came out to be z milliamperes. All right. So in the last column, we need to verify whether the sum of whether the sum of y and z is equivalent to x or not. If it comes equivalent to x, then you can say your Kirchhoff's current law has been verified. Fine. So we'll. in the next portion of this video we will be doing that practically in the let's now move on to the practical realization of kirchhoff's current law and for that i'll be requiring certain items which are firstly i'll be requiring a breadboard so this is my breadboard now you can see here that there are many breadboards integrated onto the one project board so if the size of my circuit increases i may use single or i may use double breadboards and one more feature of this project board is it has integrated power supply so i'll be giving my voltages from these two terminals and i have my multimeter which i'll be using as ammeters i have resistances and i have my connecting wires So my step number one would be identification of resistances R one, R two, R three, and R four. So based upon the color coding rule, I have identified R one as two twenty ohms, R two as two forty ohms, R three as one hundred and fifty ohms, and similarly R four also as one hundred and fifty ohms. Now step number two would be. making this diagram onto the breadboard so i have made the diagram here let us now verify our circuit i have r1 here which could be seen here i have r2 in middle which could be seen right here i have r3 and r4 which is r3 and r4 so you can clearly see the legs of r4 and r2 are connected together which can be seen here r4 and r2 are connected together why because this this power rail is supposed to be connected inside internally in the in which manner in horizontal manner all right so and the positive supply of voltage source is going to one terminal of r1 which is here and negative supply is connected to where r2 and r4 are meeting so it could be anywhere in the upper row where r r2 and r4 are connected fine so our aim here is to verify whether i1 comes out to be equal to the sum of i2 and i3 so we already know what is i1 i1 is current flowing across resistance r1 which is this one and i2 and i3 are currents flowing across resistances r2 and r3 respectively so we here want to apply my kirchhoff's current law on this node and we need to verify as to if i1 and i i2 is equal to the sum of i2 and i3 okay for that i need readings of 
various quantities written over here so let us now first take sample number one or you can say observation number one let us see how much voltage vs is we are going to give to the circuit and for that i'm going to connect my voltmeter in the voltage mode or you can say my multimeter in the voltage mode and i'll be connecting the negative end of it to the negative supply and positive end of it to the positive supply and it is giving me approximately 10 volts so i'm going to write down 10 volts is my vs now let us measure current i1 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch my multimeter in the current mode current measuring mode and i'm going again going to break my circuit here and connect a meter in series with r1 which is this one for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to break my circuit and connect the positive ten terminal of my ammeter to one end of R1 which is here and negative terminal of my ammeter goes to the same node where my resistance R1 was previously connected which is here so I can see the current flowing across resistance R1 is approximately 28.1 milli amperes alright in a similar fashion I am going to measure current so I2 for measurement of current I2 the circuit has already been made what I have done is I have again isolated one end of resistance R2 and inserted a ammeter in series with the resistance R2 so you can clearly see that one end of R2 has been shifted here and negative end of the ammeter is in line with resistance R2 and positive end is on the same node where my resistance R2 was connected earlier so I can clearly see in my ammeter that it is giving me approximately 15.5 milli amperes all right so i'm going to repeat the same process for measurement of current i3 which is flowing in this direction all right so what i'm going to do i'm going to break the circuit again and take one portion of r3 and insert a ammeter in between so what i have done is i have taken one end of resistance r3 and connected it with the negative terminal of ammeter which is here and positive terminal of ammeter is connected where the R2 was, R3 was previously connected meaning on the same node where my resistance is R1 and R2 are meeting all right so from the observation in the ammeter I can see that the current through resistance R3 is approximately 12.7 milliampere all right so let us see whether my circuit is following Kirchhoff's current law or not so I'll have to add my these two values and after adding 15.5 15.5 and 12.7 I'm getting approximately 28.2 milli ampere meaning that i1 is equal to the sum of i2 plus i3 which means which means my kirchhoff's current law has been proved for node a which was somewhere here 